<laughs> Greetings, Unsettled Souls. Welcome to The Correct Views. If you happen to be a fan of uh, Die Rommstein, you're probably going to be pretty unsettled here in a minute. I've had the pleasure of uh, seeing them two or three times, or maybe four times. Interesting story before we get started, so you can know what kind of people these guys are. Granted, the singer, Teal, has what may be a rather disturbing past with uh, Joe Letts, the creepy trans drummer for Combi Christ. If you guys don't know anything about industrial music, don't worry, I'm a freak, but I'm not going to bore you. Um, when I call him creepy, I mean he considers himself a creepy trans person. That's part of his persona, and he's creepy. Um, he played under the name Neuter Nancy with Combi. Well, anyway... We had seen a Rammstein show that Letts had opened up in Cleveland, and uh, it was at the Jacobs Field. Now, for those of you that don't know, Rammstein's comparable in Europe to Metallica. Metallica sold, I think, 100 million records. Rammstein has only sold 22, but that's comparable to Metallica for two reasons. First of all, Rammstein came around considerably later than Metallica did. Second of all, Metallica came out at a time when records and CDs and cassettes and everything like that sold gone like machine gun fire. That was almost never the case for the majority of Rammstein's career. So when you add the level of popularity together, clicks versus sales, who knows? But Rammstein is comparable to Metallica, particularly, like I said, in Europe. Um, where they had played, uh, where the Indians played, Jacobs Field, or whatever they're calling it this week. And uh, I will not call them the Guardians. I'm sorry, it wasn't the Indians. It was the uh, it was the other crybaby, uh, LeBron, the Cavaliers. They played where the Cavaliers played. The Gundarina, Gonnery, or whatever they're calling it. And there, we could listen to this. Stay with me, and we'll get to the story in a minute. But there were, it was me, and my wife, and my brother, and I think one or two other people with us, and then one or two other people that hung around where the van, where the fans and the, the tour buses meet. He was holding a, a sign that said Autogram Bitta, which means autograph, please, in German. Six or seven people where the Cavs play. I mean, a massive arena. It was all but sold out. They didn't sell out behind the band because those of you who know about the pyrotechnics, you don't want to be behind Rammstein. It's you end up on the moon. But for four, five, six people backstage holding a sign, it was like a Mentos commercial. The bus comes up, it drives, and it stops. And out comes every single member of a Rundstein to talk to us and sign our autographs in the alley by the bus bay behind the massive arena. For less than eight bands. Eight bands tops. Now, I understand why Russia may not want Rammstein in their country because they do have a very sexual sort of comedic S&M thing going on sometimes. And they are definitely an art project. However, as any student of history will let you know, particularly music history, if you try to ban something, you're going to make it bigger than ever. The Beatles were not that talented. I hate to break anybody's heart. It's simply true. One of my first memories is my mom singing Beatles songs to me as a child. So I, I have a soft spot for them. But they weren't that great of a band. They had a lot of money put behind them in order to push Satanism and occultism into mainstream America. Now, I'm not, he's saying all oh, rock and roll is evil. No, but I do think that rock and roll, and along with many other art forms, have been used for nefarious ends. And I wish that wasn't the case. It's not only rock and roll that does it. I mean, you, you have to be in the world, not of the world. You can't hide from everything. But it's important to note that, yeah, you know, the Beatles were ushered in to, to bring in a lot of really bad things. Alistair Crowley on their album covers and things. At the same time, I think each person has to have a decent parenting. Where are the parents to say, you know, this is theater, this is, you know, whatever, whatever, because they're going to find the music. It's just music. They're going to find it. So it looks like um, Russia is going to try to do everything they can to ban Rammstein. 
uh, and not knowing that, you know, the last time we tried to ban somebody, we made a superstar out of Marilyn Manson. I went to high, I went to junior high school with Brian. None of us saw that one coming. Does he suck? No. But was he made much, much bigger? And I was a huge fan. It, it, back in the day, he's kind of lately, but he blew up largely because of the number of people who tried to silence him. Well, you got to remember... Freedom in Russia hasn't existed as long as freedom has in the West. And a lot of these little nuances, they're just learning, so they probably think that banning something is going to make it work. But here is the story real quick. This is from uh, Rock News. Love. Oh, Over the weekend, the lead singer of international superstars, Rammstein, was arrested by Russian authorities over accusations he was hosting an illegal appearance in the region. Now, see, that's typical, though. The Russian overreach, that whole KGB, you can't do this, you can't do that. A lot of that still exists in Russia. But let me also say that you... You know, the same thing's happening in Australia. Whether or not this illegal meeting was tied to Ooga Booga, the COVID-19 virus, we don't know. According to multiple reports from various Russian media outlets, singer Till Lindemann was arrested by Russian police on Friday. Photos captured from the scene show law enforcement speaking with Lindemann at his hotel near where he was scheduled on August 29th to make a festival appearance. Lindemann's manager is also reportedly facing allegations of lying to enter the country. Reports claim the manager is accused of entering the country as a tourist when he was actually attempting to organize the concerts. Oh my god! Russia doesn't have anything more to worry about than whether or not somebody's organizing a show! Oh my god! Penalties could be severe, with him being deported from Russia and barred from re-entering the country. As for Lindemann, he was reportedly scheduled to also perform on September 4th and 5th in Moscow, but based on the recent encounter with law enforcement, those performances are also in question. This is far from the first time that Lindemann has had a negative encounter with Russian authorities. Just recently, he was accused of selling illegal NFTs, also known as non-fungible tokens, after the musician recorded a music video at the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia. The museum claims that sale of the NFT is illegal due to the inclusion of their artwork. They stated, quote, By offering the video as an NFT, the singer violated the agreement for its use according to the Hermitage. The same applies to other animations Lindemann is offering that show him at the Hermitage. Thus far, the Rammstein frontman has yet to comment on his run-in with authorities. It's unclear at this time what charges, if any, the musician is currently facing based on his detention with authorities. That's your latest update. I'm sorry. That's harassment. That is plain and simple harassment. For one thing, if you buy an NFT, you are an idiot. I don't wish to be ambiguous. You might think that's kind of harsh. Let me rephrase that. You are an absolute idiot. And he threw in some real artwork with it because, you know, a lot of it only existed in the ether and you can't sell something which doesn't exist if you sell it at the same time something does exist because if you sell the thing that doesn't exist, then it affects the thing which doesn't exist. That's what they just said. What the hell? Leave me a comment. Wow.